Welcome back guys, Ed Bud here, and I'd like to introduce you to the running shoes of 2019, part two. So July saw me pick up the uh, highly acclaimed Nike Vaporfly Next Percent. This shoe to me feels drastically different to the Vaporfly 4% Flyknit. Now I've managed to get some extended miles into it, i am got to be honest, I'm not completely won over. I understand lots and lots of people have broken loads and loads of records in this. They've set loads of PRs. I still haven't been completely won over by this shoe in comparison to that 4% flying it. Yes, it does feel more stable on foot. Certainly a wider base here at the sort of midfoot area of the outsole. And I think it's just a, perhaps a little bit more supportive in general, really, at the heel. I really do like this kind of inner kind of heel collar, this padded foam section here. It's nowhere near as narrow. Certainly you can even see it here around the arch area of the midsole and outsole. But I certainly haven't unlocked its potential fully myself. I'm not really afraid to say that. I'm kind of getting really tired of society um, a society which is really keen to put people down, trip people up, laugh at other people, especially when they're putting their best efforts in. I tell my daughter that her best is always good enough, and I strongly believe that. So next time you want to send me personal messages about my abilities or whatever as a runner, just do me a favour and don't bother. I'm really proud of what I've managed to achieve this year in terms of my times, in terms of my age. But that side, I certainly aim to make better use of this shoe as we head into 2020. I want to test its metal, I want to test its durability. So I did utilize the next percent to shave off a few seconds on my personal best at the 5K distance earlier on in the year. I think it was in August, uh, I hit about 19 minutes 53, which for me is a phenomenal improvement really in terms of the times that I've managed to achieve even a year before that. And I was 19.53 at the Yeovilton 5k road race so that works out about 6 minutes 17 per mile at 180 steps per minute so really got the cadence up nice and high on that three miler. So not at all bad, really pleased with that effort and certainly this shoe will stay within my rotation going into 2020. Around about 50 miles done in this one, so lots and lots more to plow into it to test out the durability. July also saw me pick up the Hoka Oni Oni Carbon X. Got to be honest, I struggled with this shoe initially a little bit at the start. It really seemed stupendously rigid and actually not really that cushioned. In comparison to the carbon plate offerings from Nike, you know, this thing is a very different beast. A very different beast to this one, certainly. A very different beast to this one, certainly. You are right, beast? So you've got all these running shoes out. Who appears? The Shoe Guardian. Really do like the light upper on this one. That toe box is barely there. This one's ideal for those sort of flowing miles, those kind of tempo type miles. Admittedly, I haven't used this shoe for any racing, only really used it on roads and pavements, um, lots and lots of training miles into it. That outsole pattern really doesn't lend itself to anything too slippery though, so be a little bit careful, viewers, if you're gonna use the Carbon X on some wet conditions. Did feel a little bit slippery out there. I managed to pick these up a little bit under retail, and I think that was probably about all I wanted to pay for them. I don't really feel they're in the same league in terms of tempo and pace as the Vaporfly 4% or the next percent. But that aside, I really did enjoy the 100 miles I put into them before my sort of final review. Hopefully I can utilize these again early in 2020 as those miles start to creep up and those sort of monthly totals in mind of my marathon attempts during 2020. So I'm gonna keep this one within the rotation for now. Oh, so next up is the Nike Zoomfly 3. So there's gotta be a villain of the piece and it's probably this one really. I struggled to get on with this shoe. I was really excited about it on release and I snapped it up as soon as I could get hold of it, but it really failed to live up to my expectations. So I utilized the Zoomfly 3 on runs between six and 12 miles in distance. It was mainly at tempo paces really, which for me is around about seven minutes 30 per mile. This shoe was so varied from day to day. It really worked for me some days and other days it really did not work for me whatsoever. 
it felt really great at pace and then the next day it would just feel as if I sort of had a clog on my foot. Not that there's anything wrong with clogs, you know, some people probably wear them all the time and they really enjoy them but this yeah certainly wasn't a shoe that I particularly enjoyed wearing some days. Kind of like it felt like one step forward and two steps back. Can't really see myself persisting with this one going into 2020. If you think this is kind of produced as a I don't know, a training kind of version of this shoe. Yeah, you know, the midsoles are similar in terms of the amount of material there, but I don't know, this just doesn't work. Too much react, drop slightly different, the upper, everything together, it just made for a not a particularly tasty broth. So 101 miles done in these, and I'm gonna be retiring them. So somebody complained on the uh, part one of this video that it was just all Nike. I'm a Nike fanboy um, and all that kind of stuff. Well, uh, I'm not a Nike fanboy. I'm very keen to try out all sorts of things. It just so happens that Nike shoes seem to work very well for me. So, you know, why would I deliberately use a shoe that just doesn't work? Just complete madness. So September saw me trying out a whole range of different shoes. Uh, first up, the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel. So this shoe needed a little bit of tinkering to get it working and kind of running on all cylinders for me. Firstly, I removed these ridiculous things from them. These insoles, they're just pointless them being there really. They're kind of like a extremely thin, very sort of uncushioned uh, insole, kind of useless and uh, yeah, chuck those away. No use whatsoever. The upper feels great on this one, I have to say. The midsole cushioning is enough but very responsive underfoot. Sizing's a little bit weird in these, you know, I went true to size, but maybe going up uh, by half a size could have solved my problems. It wasn't so much the length of the shoe, it was more the depth and the height of the toe box. Just a little bit extra room by removing that insole gave me that extra height that I needed. That sort of flyknit style upper I'm not sure what they call it, it's a sort of mesh, but it's really, really great on foot. It does feel fantastically comfortable. There's almost like a sort of sock feel about this shoe. You've got this sort of very uh, cushioned, bouncy, responsive midsole underneath your toes, and this kind of almost sock-like fit over the kind of midfoot and forefoot section of the shoe. I opted also for some slightly shorter laces in these. I think these are the ones I pulled out of my old uh, Ultra Boosts, uh, the version 4s. Um, and these laces seem to fit just right. They were just the right length. So once I sorted out those issues, I got some fantastic tempo runs in in the Fuel Cell Rebel. I preferred these shoes really at that sort of 7 minutes 10, 7 minutes 15 per mile pace. I would suggest that this shoe is really not something you can utilize for very easier pace miles. It does want to push you, even when I tried going out doing some sort of recovery or you know, easy paced three mile efforts, they just made me go way too fast and uh, not really an ideal shoe for that type of work. But if you're looking to do some pace stuff, this is a great shoe. Decent price as well, I think it came in a little over a hundred pounds, which yeah, yeah, that's quite a lot of money for a shoe. But if you're going to smash a load of miles into it, want some enjoyment out of it, hundred pounds is probably a reasonable amount of money to spend on a good quality shoe. Such a good quality shoe. Such I turned into Sean Connery. A good quality shoe, such as the Fuel Cell Rebel. I managed to say it after the like tenth time. I liked it for those sort of seven mile tempo efforts or the efforts including some interval work at higher paces but I've got to be honest as I got up towards that 10 11 mile kind of area I felt that this shoe for me personally lacked a little bit of stability and was a little bit too kind of flat out response for me so I'd probably opt for something a little bit more cushioned but that's just for me personally. So certainly staying in the rotation, an exciting shoe. Um, kind of my replacement really for the Zoom Fly Flyknit, which I loved so dearly from 2018. 54 miles in this, I'm gonna plow loads more into this yet. You staying with me, buddy. So next up, the Tank Asics Glide Ride. Always reminds me of the garage when you, whenever you take your car in to have the tires done or something. That stuff's real good, man. Smells real good. Smells better than a slightly warmed mince pie with a little cream. Just add a 
little extra richness to the pie. It smells even better than that. So clearly this is a response to that kind of Hoka rocker style action that everybody's trying to get into these days. They're all trying to tap into the force, you know, that Hoka. The Hoka seem to have the force at the moment, you know, they're producing some real good stuff. They're really moving forward. So I use these at paces of around seven minutes, 30 per mile. I think they really shine around that kind of tempo. Anything higher though, and it starts getting a little tough, certainly for me, to produce using the Glide Ride. This is a solid shoe, build quality is right up there. Everything about it just seems very well thought out. The materials used, the placement of everything is just top notch. I can see these lasting a considerable time. There's nowhere whatsoever on the outsole and the upper's looking pretty good apart from some mud. One area I haven't been able to really utilize it yet is in the wet and I would be a little bit concerned about that there's quite a lot of cushioning here. It's quite a lot of foam around the uh, kind of heel area. And also the tongue, I can see that taking on quite a lot of moisture. And it's already quite a weighty shoe. So with that added moisture, it could make it even heavier and tip the balance. I need to do some more experimentation with this shoe, really. I think that they could work really well at that sort of longer, slow distance where I'm going to have to do those long runs, those 20 mile runs. I think the Glide Ride could come in handy. So certainly going to have them in the rotation as we head towards 2020. Though my one kind of negative to the Glide Ride is I think the perhaps the price point when people kind of look at a shoe that they're only going to use for a very specific kind of utilization so those kind of longer slower tempo type miles perhaps at slightly slower speeds that could put people off a little bit i have noticed that those shoes that are very versatile they can be used for all sorts of different runs are the ones that people really seem to love and that they seem to sell extremely well let's just hope that that isn't the case with the glide ride and people do latch onto them they are a very very good shoe slightly overlooked please do give them a try if you can just to let you know guys all these shoes here you know i've not been sent any of these i bought them with my own money my views are my honest opinions about the shoes as i've gone out and worn them running through all sorts of different conditions day in day out they're my honest views next up the hoka oneone wrinkle so this was a shoe i was really keen to try lots of people would indicated to me that I should test it out. Ed, you've got to test this shoe, you'll love it. And they were right. It's a great shoe for me in terms of weight, durability and versatility. I'm quite a light sort of dude. I don't weigh a huge amount. I think it's about 11 and a half stone or something. Um, probably a little underweight, but I eat all the time. I, I eat like some sort of, like a, like a trash bin. You know, I'm just constantly eating like a gannet or something. Uh, I never, never stop eating. Same as the beast, you know, we're, we're just eating all the time. You know, today, Domino's, Jaffa Cakes, oh, it's terrible. So I, I didn't really find that much wear on the outsole after my 100 miles in these. I had switched out the insoles for some uh, Pegasus 35 Turbo insoles, and that made a big, big difference to this shoe. Again, these light sort of, pointless things, I just don't get it. You produce such a fantastic shoe like the Rincon, and you put these useless things in it. I would say don't be fooled by the midsole here, you know, the actual shoe kind of cups around your heel, certainly at the back of your foot, so not all of this is underfoot. I think pretty good price, very competitive price to this shoe. I picked this up for just under £100. It's got great fit, ample toe box room. I found it to be really useful actually in wet conditions. Certainly a versatile shoe. I managed to undertake a fair number of different paces using the Rincon. So certainly useful at different paces, different tempos. I'm gonna keep these within the rotation as we're probably moving into some sort of wetter weather now. I found that this shoe was great. Handled wet weather really well. Dried out really quickly. It was always sort of there. It's always saying, Ed, I'm ready. Take me out again. Take me out in that pouring rain. Certainly a really great daily trainer, this one, if you're looking for something that can kind of handle a number of different 
activities, I think this could be a good choice. I'm very keen to experiment with it in some warmer and drier weather, so I'm gonna keep it within the rotation. I think I've got a little over 100 miles in this one, so we're staying there with this one, with the ring on for the 2020. I think it just kinda looks cool as well. It, it looks great, doesn't it? Come on. If you got the ring on, it does look like a damn good shoe. So there's a couple of other shoes that I've literally just come to the end of my 100 mile uh, kind of activities, uh, which is the Infinity Run. Uh, I'll have my full 100 mile review of that hopefully up tomorrow for you. And the other shoe that's still on the review kind of test bed is the Pegasus 36 Shield. Got about 42 miles into that one, so I've got some way to go before I get to that sort of 100 mile mark that I really like to get to with most shoes um, to give me my full review. That's probably next up in the order now, the Pegasus 36 Shield. I'll be using that one pretty much exclusively now for the next few days. There's also the Adios 4. That's a shoe that I've kind of been reserving a little bit for possible races. So as things dry up a little bit here and there's some more local 5K or 10K races that I can undertake, the Adios 4 is something that I want to really test out um, on some road sort of pavement based races. You'll probably remember in my first half marathon training vlog series that I used the Adios 4 for a, I think it was around about a 10 mile tempo run and easily managed to get a speed of around about seven minutes, 10 seconds per mile pace. Those shoes are quick, nimble and fast and a fantastic traction. I aim to explore the Adidas models more as I move into 2020. I want to look at the Boston series, the Ultra Boost 20 and the Adios 5 as well. I really enjoy the drop and the very sort of minimal midsole on the Adios 4. So I want to get some more miles into those before I give you my fully formed review on the Adios 4. Right guys, I think that about wraps up the shoes of 2019. Tell me what have been your best shoes of 2019 and also your worst shoes of 2019 in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so already and give the video a like because it's a really nice thing to do if you give it a like to keep moving forward. I really appreciate you watching the videos, guys. I hope they give you lots of enjoyment. I hope they're useful. I hope they help you to make some decisions about which shoes might work for you and which won't. Make sure you share the video, guys. My name's Ed Budd, and I'll be seeing you.